the morning comes. And you've all been given your respective tasks by, well, possibly Nikolai Godzinski, but who can tell, really? Some extra power. Something outside your reality, but something each of you instinctively knows is real. This wasn't a dream. This was a transportation. It was a shift in your mentality and your reality. And so when you wake, you know there is a task at hand. But do you feel alone? Do you feel like this is your task alone to complete? Staying with Margot for a moment, waking up on the sofa. Josh has already left. He left before you woke, heading to work earlier than needed. Margot, you have the most complete picture in mind of what is needed, though, of course, you don't know the full details. You do know that Doug and Kevin are involved. What's your plan here? You've got one day before Steve Sanderson arrives. Project management. I'm so good at it. I always have been. That's why that app is so successful. It's one of the reasons why this community is so successful. I need to get the three of us together. And I know this the moment my eyes blink open and I'm covered in this ash. So I am going to pull out my phone. I'm going to get the three of us on a group text message. And I am going to ask for an immediate and emergency meet. I'm going to get these clothes into the rubbish bin. I am going to get showered. I am going to clean the last of the tears that Josh caused off of my face and off of my conscience. Because someone has entrusted me with a task, a goal. And I need to assemble the best team that I know to get these completed. And also, let's 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 be honest. I don't know if the two of them are actually going to be able to follow through. They may need some direction, some encouragement. And that's something I'm happy to provide for the team. Kevin and Doug, you each receive the message. Your WhatsApp pings. It's from Margot. And Margot, where are you suggesting this meeting occur? Not at my house. Not after the last time? No, not after the last time. And with the instability that is Laura and Deborah, I don't feel comfortable hosting at their houses either, but we can't do something in public. But I have a cabin. I have a cabin. Yeah. I'll send them that address. I mean, a lot of you in Novaville have got holiday homes or timeshares. This cabin, however, isn't anywhere near so exotic. It is, in fact, Josh's cabin. He uses it for hunting, but, well, he used it for hunting. He stopped going there about four years ago. Its initial intention, of course, was for romantic getaways for the two of you. There's nothing so romantic as checking in somewhere that isn't your own house. But those stopped eight years ago. Then it was for hunting, and now it's just empty. It's the ideal meeting place. Receiving that message and waking up in the morning, I, I of course, had over there because, I mean, that she's calling us together like this, it, it means something. What I saw yesterday, it does, it did mean something. You pass Laura on the landing, she gives you a smile, She's getting the children up. Hello, Kevin. Did you sleep okay? Morning, honey. But more importantly, did you have a look at the brochure? Um, it's all right. It's all right. You don't have to tell me. Get it, it's okay. I'm just excited. I, I smile at her and yeah, I, I started looking at it. They, it's some really good choices there. It's going to be really hard to to, to pick one of them though. Um. I really want to look at it together with you. She squeezes a little. I'm thinking maybe for for people... Uh, kids, brush your teeth. I'm thinking for people like me right now, 
in today's climate. I don't, I don't mean temperature, although the temperature is probably good too. I'm thinking Florida. It looks, it looks perfect for, for women like me. She stands up a little with uh, chin up, chest out. You know, true patriots, people who believe in community and in the country and keeping American values. But but uh, don't uh, don't let me get carried away. I, I listen. You get up, do your thing. We will speak later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, we will. We will. And Flor- Florida sounds nice. Florida sounds nice. We c- we can't let the kids go to Disney though, okay? No, of course, of, of course not. I have to. Yeah, and uh, I I don't even want to get into that conversation. I love Disney, but I, this is a conversation we've had before, and it didn't end well. Then it's well, it's not going to be going any better now. And I'm I, I I have her in a good position now. It's it's finally going in the right direction. We're finally fixing things up, patching things up together. So I'll try to keep her as happy as I can by playing into all of this, you know? Hmm. And uh, you head off to meet at Margot's cabin. How about Doug? There is a little bit of hesitation as I pace around my room. I briefly go and check on my son, make sure he's fed. I look over the text. This can't be just a coincidence. It has to be connected somehow. But that task that fucking demon wants me to do. I can't do that. That's... I can't. I'm not a murderer. I say to myself. I have a better plan. A much better plan. Already in motion. And that's what we've got to do. But I did need the other two for that anyway. So, okay. Why not? I, Why not? I, I, I'd be meaning to talk to the other two. There's no harm in going and telling them what's happening. I can't believe that I'm beginning to entertain the idea that this thing really is out there trying to ruin our lives, but well, that dream seemed too real, too real, so fine, I'll go, but I'm gonna have to convince them because I'm not murdering Steve Sanderson. I can't, and, and how would that help anyone? If anything, that would destroy the bloody community and get us all in jail or something like that, and again... That thing tried to weasel out of it, but it killed that girl! I'm trusting something that murders children! But I'll tell the others that. It's all gonna be fine. So yes, I will clean up, make sure to book the babysitter for my daughter, and uh, clean up and go out. I am gonna get this all sorted. And in the meantime, luckily a lot of this doesn't need me, but those changes to his schedule. He wanted low-key, right? So, so... Let's make it low key. Let's let's cancel some of the big events. People will complain. I don't give a fuck, because he wanted low key. Because maybe secretly, I'm putting in some plans just in case I can't convince the others. Just in case. When you all roll up to the cabin, Margot is already there. Margot, how are you looking? Are you all cleaned up to essentially? conceal the events of the previous 24 hours. I feel amazing. I look amazing. I've showered. I've put myself together. That's physically, emotionally, psychologically. I have direction. And having direction is so revitalizing. I'm waiting for them on the porch. I I, I, I have... Um, the clothes that I was wearing yesterday, I did pull those out of the rubbish on the way out the door. Uh, I have my top um, covered with ash and burn hanging off of one side of the front rails and then my bottoms on the other. They need to know immediately upon arrival that one, everything's going to be okay because we have clarity. And two, even before I open my mouth, that I saw him. It, whatever that thing was, those two things need to be made abundantly clear before either of us, any of us, open our mouths. So I have it staged accordingly. 
and I smile when I see them arrive. The smile might falter a little when you see the top of Doug's head. Uh, the hair has clearly been, well, burned down somewhat to make him look almost comedic. Uh, he hasn't had time to go to a barber's, given your uh, request to get straight to the cabin. Good morning, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you for, and I look over the singed hair, prioritizing this meeting. Why wouldn't I, Margo? You call me, I'd be meeting to talk to you. Uh, there's lots of things to discuss. Wouldn't believe it. We almost lost Steve Sanderson, <laughs> if not for a little phone call. Let's get inside, and you can tell me what you wanted to talk about. We almost lost Steve Sanderson? What do you mean? He wasn't going to come. He was going to cancel the whole thing, but I managed to organize it days ago. I've been very, very busy, so that's why I haven't... I'm sorry I didn't get back to either of you about all that. I'm really glad you you managed that, Doug. I... I really want my son to meet Steve. Um, it's it's really important for him. Of course, it's very important for everything that's happened. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's not why you called us, Margot. Again, deep down, I'm wondering if maybe she's going to have something unimportant to say, but she looks so prepared, so ready. I'm dreading what she is going to say, but I want to hear it. So I gesture to the others. Kevin, Margot, let's go inside, and you can tell us what was so important. Please. I don't open the door. I have refreshments. Of course. I stopped by the Publix on the way here. And I'll happily enter. So, gentlemen, let's talk about last night. I take it you both have visits? The the smell of charred flesh fills each of your nostrils as you say that. Mm. That's... That's pretty fucking weird, isn't it? I mean, it... it yeah, yes. But... I mean, how can that be real? I sigh and clench my fist a little and say, I don't know. What's your point, Margot? Go on. I was asked to do something. And then I'm going to look from Kevin and Doug and what I want to know, what I want to discover is which among the two of them is a liar. So I looked to Kevin. Did it ask something from you? We <laughs> destroy a photo album is supposedly a fundament of... of the, of, of the, the town. Um, it, it might be in Eli Jenkins' house or at school. It, it sounds simple enough. It's just a photo album. I mean, who cares, right? It should be easy enough. I look over to Mr. Kennedy... I tense up. I raise an eyebrow at hearing Kevin say, Burn a photo album. What the actual fuck? And then I simply say, What did it ask you, Margot? It did ask me something. You go first. Mr. Kennedy, we're all friends here. And we all have to lean on each other. What did it ask you to do? something I'm not gonna do, okay? Not gonna happen. We're not gonna do what it wants us to do. I've already got a plan in mind that's actually gonna solve all our problems. Not this, not fucking this, no. <clears throat> what? Murder Steve Sanderson so a demon can emerge from his flesh and walk the earth. What, what, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. What about you, Margo? Do you remember that Chrysler that Nikolai Gazinski used to drive? It's in a landfill. I have confirmation of the registration, but I'm sure you each remember it as well. I am to retrieve that vehicle and park it in front of the home that used to belong to him. It. You're actually fucking kidding me, Margo. No. A photo album and park a car. And, okay, well, I mean, that just confirms it. All right, Kevin, all right. Maybe you were right. 
a demon from fucking hell. Nikolai is trying to torment us, and this clearly is the final play. This is the final play. Make us fucking kill a bunch of people so we all go to hell with him. Clearly. I'm not going to do it. You didn't ask me to kill anyone. I just need to destroy him. wants me to skin Steve Sanderson, man. Steve sound. Sanderson! I don't like the guy, but I'm not fucking gonna do that. That does, that does sound like a, a very serious um, request. Yeah. It is. Uh, and it's gonna damn us all, clearly. Don't you agree with me, Margo? We're not trusting the guy who mur- he murdered that little girl. This thing. I'm going to slide into the couch next to Mr. Kennedy, and I'm going to put a very reassuring hand on his knee. We burned a man alive over a decade ago. We buried a child a week ago. Is the line you're really going to draw in the sand skinning Steve Sanderson? We burned... Fucking monster, which has now been proven. I'll admit to you both. I've, I always had a bit of doubt. No more. He's proven it. He was a monster. He's trying to claw out of hell. We buried a little girl just so that, just so she'd be found later. God damn it! Murdering Steve Sanderson is completely different. The guy's a moron, but he's an innocent. Yeah, I, I, I don't really feel comfortable with that either he I mean the entire community would would it would implode I mean he's our hero he's everything to us how, how could we kill him exactly Margo think about it think about it like that's if I was a being from hell who wanted to destroy a peaceful community that's what I would do I'd take down their idol is that what we are Mr. Kennedy a peaceful community Laura is going insane Deborah, I, I can't even begin to unpack whatever the fuck is happening with your wife right now. Kevin's child is drawing pornographic images depicting God knows what. We're seeing things. We're smelling burning flesh. Peaceful community. This community is falling apart. And the three of us have been given the keys to lock the goddamn door and to save everyone. You're going to turn this away? You're going to turn this down? I want to. I've already got a pla- I got a guy. I've got a guy coming in tonight. He's gonna, he, all three of us, we're gonna get exercised the pro- the proper way, the God's way. No, oh, baby. And I, and to be and if I'm honest, Margot's hand on my knee is actually comforting. I haven't been given a comforting touch for days now, maybe even weeks now, and it is a friend. But I still say to her, granted, not angrily, but maybe a little just trying to reason. And how would we... If we did this, it doesn't save the community. It destroys the community and us. I turn and look at Kevin. What did it promise you if you did this? What did it tell you it could offer in exchange? Promised that all of this would be... would be past... It would all be over, and it it would be free, and we would be free, and be able to forget forget all about this. Start anew, you know, somewhere else, like 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 Florida. We, we could go to Florida. You, you could come with me. What? Florida? N- no. And how does that work, Kevin? It, it it you know what I think happens? I think this thing something fucking biblical happens maybe. Worst case scenario, not that doesn't happen then. Oh, it's all three of us are in the newspapers. Steve Sanderson brutally murdered by three crazy people in a small town in America. Doug, it's already showed us what it can do. And I don't think it's had its foot on the gas yet. Look at how we have suffered. This past few weeks, it can make that worse. Your 
you're proceeding like we have a choice, baby, but I don't think we do. We can be free. Damned if we do, damned if we don't. I'm saying that you control Steve Sanderson's schedule, and I have a secluded cabin. I kind of frown, and despite my protestations, I always do like to think ahead. I already made sure his schedule was easier, and then something does come to my mind. Hypothetically, because I'm still not agreeing, but hypothetically, your, your two things, no one fucking cares, right? Get, burn a book, park a car, ten seconds. Murdering Steve Sanderson would be very, very... You've got to... There has to be a better way of doing it than... Maybe, maybe there is a way that it could work and it could solve the other problem as well. By which I mean the little girl. Go on. Well, what if... What if, <laughs> and I start pacing the room, maybe even sounding a little crazy. I certainly think I sound crazy, but it does just start spilling out of me. The thing about Steve Sanderson is if he dies, this fucking, everything dies with him. Unless, of course, he dies as a hero, as a martyr. What? Well, what if? Okay, get this. The reason he didn't want to come back home Something to do with a therapist, something about troubles and should leave it all behind him. Something clearly, I don't know, some childhood trauma or something, maybe to do with the school. What if Steve, as he's walking along, he he remembers something horrible that happened to him when he was a kid and it gives him a clue. I know this sounds stupid, but again, this is, that's the whole point, it's the story. People like stories. What if he remembers something that we've all missed? He hears about a missing girl, right? Oh no! Where could a missing girl be? Maybe. And what if he found that missing girl? And and he found the person who who's killed her? But then, oh no! There's a fire. A fire. And what if he called for backup? And of course he'd call the, me and you and, and maybe he even tries to call fucking Josh too. I don't know. Do, do, do you get where I'm going here? What if, what if suddenly Steve Sanderson is killed in a horrific fire where his burned remains are found with that of the little girl and, and the only witnesses left well, we tell everyone that, oh no that the killer got away the killer who killed the little girl, the killer who killed Steve Sanderson, but fuck it, Steve Sanderson died a hero a fucking hero or maybe the killer dies with him too, I don't know do you see where I'm going with this? you can hear the gears of madness grinding in Doug's head as he is trying to explain this incredibly convoluted and likely unworkable plot. And yet... It could be a way of murdering Steve Sanderson without it reflecting back on any of the three of you. It's a wonderful deflection. It's just the big question is how to orchestrate it. And I look at Margot and say, you were always good on the details. How the fuck's that? You say this thing can do anything. People like a story, Margot. They like heroes dying in fires. They, they like them sometimes so much that they don't necessarily always look at all the details. Do you see what I'm getting at here? If, if, if we even do all this... Because my plan's going to work anyway, so we won't need to do it. Mm. I see what you're getting at, Mr. Kennedy. I do. And I'm going to look over to Kevin just to get a temperature check on how he's doing in this particular moment. I'm, of course, shocked by all this. I mean, Steve is, you know, he's a hero. He's... But we have to... We have to save ourselves. We have to save our families. Uh, seen what has happened to my wife, to my son and if what's required is is for Steve to go out in a blaze of glory be a hero, be he'd be in the Hall of Fame immediately, you know people would remember his name and he would there would be specials about him before the Super Bowl every year and and 
It wouldn't be so bad. It wouldn't be such a bad way to go, after all. And, and, and he would save my life and my family's life. And that would be worth it, I guess. I, I just kind of nod. At, I look very un uncertain, but I nod and I say, well, I think we just have to do it, right? We have to... We, we have to... We have to become free. We have to free ourselves. We have to free the community. This is what's required. But, Mongrel, you need to give me a chance. You need to give my plan a chance first, okay? Because that... If that works, we don't need to do what the fucking thing says and we can exercise it straight back to hell. Okay, Mr. Kennedy. We can give your plan a chance. In the meantime, can we please negotiate while we're waiting to see if your plan holds water that we work on the photo album and the car and at least get those two items in place. Can we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's do the let's do the easy things first. Park a car, burn some photos. Easy peasy. We we can do that and you, you get what I'm getting at as well, don't you? Cuz cuz if we just just do what it says. That little girl like we can't just keep burying things in the closet like that. That closet opens eventually. I know. It needs to be sorted. I know. We, we, I know. But we have tools. The three of us, we are brilliant, especially together. And we're unafraid to do what it takes to protect our family and ourselves and our community. I have a cabin. You have access to Steve Sanderson's schedule and his trust. This is achievable. You think? No, with you in charge, I know. And, for the time being, we have a puppet in the sheriff's office. I nod to myself. I feel more confident. Granted, we're not going to have to do some of the stuff because my plan's going to work regardless, but there's no harm in doing the other things. No harm in planning. No harm in setting the dominoes just in case they need to fall. And Margot, so calm, and it's inspiring to me. And I go... Oh, Margo, you're right, you. You see, Kevin, she always has the details. Always the details. I And I lead, and you do, Kevin. We need you, of course. And I go over and I pat him firmly on the shoulder. We always need the man who actually does the deed. Uh, and I, I, I think about what is it that he means by doing the deed. Um, but that's something I don't want to think about. That's, that's later. We might not even have to do that. Yeah, that photo album, yeah? Let's, uh... Let's go, uh, pay the coach a visit, huh? I nod. I smile. And I nod. As you're leaving the cabin, Margot, you see a photo on the wall. It's a view of and Josh. You're both dressed in hunting gear. You look ridiculous. Between the two of you, holding a brace of birds that you've shot... Mostly Josh shot. Yeah, it's a memory, whether it's a good one or not. You can see the expression on your face. It's a certain glazed over, rigid smile that you've had to put on so often. This temptation now, this promise of making Josh gone gone. It's making all this sound like it could be worth it. I'm going to take that photo from the wall. And I'm going to look at it. I'm going to revisit that memory, try to embody it. I'm shunted back out of it. So many false memories from the day he proposed until now. I'm going to walk up next to Mr. Kennedy. I'm going to show him the photo. And I'm going to look him dead in his face. I should have married you. And then I'm going to step off the porch and drop that photo into the trash before I head to my car. Quite frankly, I'm speechless for a moment. I don't know how to process that. Maybe part of me feels sad. After all, everything that's happening with Deborah. Truth is, I don't hate Deborah. She just doesn't seem to love me anymore. And maybe that's made her unhappy, which I didn't want. And who knows, maybe that's all gonna end soon, we're gonna get divorced, and 
all that jazz, maybe. And Marco... She's always been there for me. But again, I don't know how to process this, so I just kind of blink a little and move on for now. The trio are making their way to the house of Eli Jenkins, the old coach at uh, Novaville High. Go Narwhals. Uh, that our good Kevin Miller took over for a time. Uh, that is indeed your your role now. Uh, along with uh, performing your logistics and uh, supply jobs, you do still help out with the team, don't you? I am the coach of the team, after all, and you know I've been I've been trying to keep up my duties as as well as I can. You know, uh, studying game tape, trying to do all those things in between everything else that's been going on. I. Well, I mean, it hasn't been going all that well, but I've at least been able to keep appearances up, and yeah, it's still important to me. Kevin, it's you who rings the doorbell at Eli's home, and there's a heavy, a set of heavy footsteps making their way to the door. Just coming! And then the door opens. He looks at you through the screen. Kevin? Coach Jenkins. Oh, Doug. What what do to what do I owe this uh, player? Oh, we just wanted to come over and see how you're doing. Uh wanted to, uh-huh. you know, talk about the past perhaps, you know. Been uh been thinking a little bit about, you know, what the team went through before. You know, we have, we have Steve coming in, you know, and yeah, see Steve. If, if there's some good mm. some some good stories we could share with him when he's here from from the good from the good old days, you know. So if you have a minute, it'd be great to hear, what, you know, if there's some stories and I don't know photos and stuff that we could have a look at from from the good old days, you know. He looks at you suspiciously. And then he opens the screen door. Yeah, well, uh, don't mind the mess or anything. I've been, uh, I need to get this place cleaned up. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm I'm sure Steve is going to want to come by. This place looks like the house of a hoarder. No one ever goes over Eli's house. It's not because they don't like him. He is a staple of the community. He is the person that pushed Steve Sanderson all the way to the top. Uh, Certainly he gets the credit more than Kevin. Uh, but the home life of Eli Jenkins is certainly nothing to be proud of, and nothing you're going to be bragging about, having experienced. Sports magazines, newspapers, uh, the all kinds of junk mail, they form stacks, fairly neat, uh, that line the hallway to make it single file. Uh, as you... As you enter, there's literally no way of walking to a breast in a place like this. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry about the mess. Um, oh, no worries. It, you know, it. And and I, 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 want to say something reassuring that it's perfectly normal. I wasn't expecting visitors. Uh, yeah, sorry, we just d- dropped by unannounced. I'm, I'm really sorry about that, Coach. Uh, hey, uh, but but uh, you, you're keeping a lot of important stuff. I, I see. It's, it's it's great. You know, don't wanna don't wanna lose anything important yeah yeah uh he points at his living room you can find some space in there i'll be with you in a in a moment he thanks yeah yeah uh, and, and i'll head inside and uh, while we have a minute with the coach uh, away I'm, I'm immediately just trying to see if i can i mean can i can i sense what it is that i'm supposed to be looking for i mean it must be hundreds of albums and books and useless junk here. I mean, how would... Can I can I feel which one is, is the one that I'm supposed to find? He, he kind of said that, that I would know. As you question yourself, can I sense it? Yeah. It's that smell of... It's the smell of cloying, unwashed flesh. Like it's been sweaty, stuck in a jock strap for a little too long, and darting through the changing room showers without actually touching any water, letting it hit the skin. It is every 
high school teenage boy who has just done phys ed and then, then ran to the next class, filling the room with the stench, their musk. That's the smell you can pick up. It is light in this room, despite the many, many albums and, as you say, uh, various collections of photos around here. This isn't particularly any more clean than the hallway. Uh, you can find places to sit if you clear the sunken sofa, uh, but you're just shifting the mess. To tidy a place like this, to even search through a place like this, you think, would require a full investigative team. Luckily, there are three of you. Unfortunately, Margot and Doug, you are not experiencing the same olfactory sensation. It is only Kevin whose eyes are narrowing as if he is almost honing in on something. You can hear Eli bustling somewhere else in the house. I look around the room, frown a little, eye Kevin, and say, Well, do you see what you need? And I'm, see this album? And I'm kind of smelling like, a, like I was some hunting dog or something like that. And I'm just trying to home in on where it's all coming from. It must be somewhere over there, I say, and I, I begin moving in a direction where I think my nose is leading me. You think of when you were playing with Ronald when he was much younger, Walker not that long ago, playing hotter and colder when you've hidden something in the house. That's how it is to you right now as you wander around the living room, whether the s smell is sharper or more dull, depending on where you are stood. It's when you get to the doorway that is at its strongest. You don't think it's in the living room. You think it must be somewhere else in the house. At which point Eli confronts you. He has a tray with some cups and a uh, coffee percolator. Can I help you? I, I was just looking around, uh, searching for photo albums and, 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 and the like. Uh... Well, there's plenty in there. Let's take a seat. You tell me what you want, I should be able to locate it. It's like an antique store in here. He pushes past you, kicks some papers off the low coffee table and places the tray down. I run the joint. I know where everything is. <clears throat> well, isn't that swell? Isn't that swell, Margo? I haven't, I haven't said much in this encounter because right now I'm watching... Right now, I am so incredibly proud of Kevin. The entry, the we're looking for historical data to support the parade. It was, it was brilliant. It was such a clever way to begin the process on getting what we need to collect. And then, and now the the, the sniffing and him behaving like a bloodhound. I have, I have so much confidence in him in this moment. I have such pride in realizing that we are on the right track because if, if he can sense this thing, he's being guided. And the other thing I recognize is, depending on how this plays out, Eli Jenkins may or may not be able to leave this house. So I smile over to Mr. Kennedy, but I am going to make sure that I remain standing and that I am an obstruction between this avalanching horde of chaos and that front door. Yes, it's it's amazing. The, the parade and the celebration are going to be so enriched by so enriched by you, coach. Thank you so much for the time. Um Margo. You know uh, how to butter a guy up. <laughs> go on, take a seat. I smile flirtatiously. And I'll then go and take a seat. I will look to Kevin. I don't have all the faith Margot has it in, but I do have some. But at the end of the day, Kevin is not working alone. I clear my throat and I get out my phone for a moment and I look at something on it. I pretend to anyway and then say... So, Eli, here's the thing as well. Regard so, first of all, obviously, we're here for the parade, but also, and keep this under your hat, 
I'm working on a little pro- Well, we're working on a little project, actually. And, well, it's something we think you'd be interested in. Is that so? That's right. You like kids and sports, don't you? <laughs> What's your angle? Well, I'm working on a little foundation. Uh, I'm hoping Mr. Steve Sanderson's going to be part of it, but I'd like... Well, it needs a face, and it can't be Steve Sanderson's face, after all. He's good, but it needs a, a more trustworthy face. You know, an, an older face. A face that screams old-school Americana. A face <sighs> like yours. Well, I've put on a lot of weight since I retired. He has. He's all jowl and hanging over his belt buckle. That's nothing Photoshop can't fix, my friend. The things they could do with computers these days. Besides, it's not its not about that. It's about setting up a foundation for disenfranchised kids to get involved in sports in their local communities. Starting with Noville, of course, but then branching out as well. And I mean, I don't want to, you know, toot my own horn, but uh, there could be a little bit of a profit in it. Not just for the kids, but for people involved in as well, if you get my meaning. <laughs> and I give him a wink. Yeah, okay, um, sounds like a good idea, Doug. I wish you well with it, and what, do you just want a photo of me, or what, do you want me well, in some wanna... kind of management committee? Well, something like that, yeah, could I pick your brain? I mean, again, it might take a little, like, maybe just ten, twenty minutes, but I, I assure you. Okay, and then be... the photo albums, alright? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, pour, pour yourself a, a cup. They're, those, those are some real Ecuadorian beans. And as I get ready to sell him a spiel, which, to be fair, is the easiest thing of all this, because I have several charities that I do run, I give Kevin a meaningful look. Coach, um, I, I was thinking you you must have an album that's focused on Steve, right? The the the, the story of Steve, like that. You 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 have tons of pictures from from his journey, right? Um, that that would be so amazing if we could take some of that and we could. I mean, we could show it to him, and we could show how you know we have been following his journey from the beginning, and and we might even have something that you know the the, the big the, the big news shows that the NFL don't don't have. You know, we we could yeah we could yeah really do something of, with that. You you like to you could talk the hind leg off of well anything. Sounds like a great plan, though. How about well we have tea and talk a little. Uh, yeah, you show Kevin some albums and uh. Listen, I've had a lot of kids. And, um, I've never kept an album just about Steve, uh, but I've got plenty of albums, you know, when they cleared out the archives at the school, I, uh, collected a bunch of them, brought them back here. If you're looking for particular years, like the ones where Sanderson was our star quarterback, then I'm sure it's in here. Uh, I can find all kinds of things like that if that's what you're looking for. Uh, that, that would be that would be great. I can I can come with with you and we can we can go go over it. I mean, if, if what I'm really looking for is something from the school that's like, you know, really like a a, a fundament, you know, like a really like shows the foundation of this town of the school of this football program that we have Ke- here. Kevin, Kevin, buddy. He doesn't need to, like, guide you for all of it. You've got a brain. How about you show Kevin where some of this stuff is? You let Kevin do the research, and you and me and Imago, we can have a chat. Come on, Kevin. He doesn't need to be hovering over your shoulder the whole time, right? I'd be totally fine with that. I'd be totally fine. I mean, you clearly have a system here, so, you know, I- I'm sure I can figure that out. If you can show me where you, where you have the albums, I'll find it. Well, I mean, most of them are scattered around here uh, in the, uh... Study as well, it's a bit more of a mess, which you think defies belief, but you've not seen the room yet. Uh, yeah, let me let me show you where they are, and then you can get started. And, uh, Thank you so much, Coach. We really appreciate it. Um, oh, uh, anything for you, Marg. I'll throw him a wink. You know, when you're looking for something, but you're not quite sure what it is that you're looking for, but you'll just know it when you see it. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what we're looking for here, Coach. All right. Kevin will know it when he sees it. I nod. As the coach heads off into the study, Kevin, your scent attracts you upstairs. I follow it immediately. The coach heads into the study, assuming Kevin will be shortly behind him. This doesn't give Kevin much time. As Kevin bounces up the stairs following his nose. Margot, what's your plan? I believe my immediate plan is to 
I mean, really, at the end of the day, I need to extend as much time to Kevin as possible. Hmm. So it's going to be just being a physical, social obstruction to the coach turning around and realizing that Kevin isn't there. That's that's a temporary solution. This is a Band-Aid on a broken leg. But if things escalate, we're prepared because we have clarity and direction now. So I'm just going to walk up beside the coach as he begins sifting through, sorting through whatever this chaos situation that's called his life and be as supportive as possible. Yeah, the study actually has a stink to it. It's not the same scent that Kevin is following. There is probably a mammal or two that has crawled under some of these piles and died. The smell of dead raccoon and rat. There's certainly one of the two in this room, but he seems oblivious. Sorry about all the mess, Marg. Um, I wasn't expecting visitors, uh, like I said. No, we're uninvited. And please, Coach, stop apologizing. Um, if you say so. Uh, look, it's just um, just around here. And he reaches back. Kevin, you're up the stairs. You follow your nose. You enter his bedroom. The smell here... Well, it hits you hard. Hits you in the face. Makes your eyes water. The stench of old sweat and other bodily fluids. Can I ask you to make a willpower roll? That is 11. You're able to force your way through it, though you are inexplicably crying. There's pain in this room. This room is the cleanest of all the ones you've been in so far. This room is almost like a sacred place, you think like an altar or shrine. The bedding is clean. There are no piles of laundry on the floor. There are old sports trophies in a cabinet in the corner. But where you are drawn is to the old mattress on the bed. Just between the mattress and the bed frame. You think if you lift it up, you're going to find your fundament. Bingo. There it is. And and I'll begin lifting up the the mattress this is it, this is what I was looking for this is the fundament as Margot and the coach are rummaging through the piles of debris where's Kevin got to he was supposed to be helping me with this at that point I step in gently closing the door with my foot carrying with me some of the drinks that were on that tray and I simply say to Eli so, anyway, as I was saying, this foundation, and I begin ranting off a whole bunch of nonsense, the key here simply being to keep him distracted and make it seem as if Kevin not being there doesn't matter at all. As you ramble away at him and try and distract him from Kevin's absence, could I ask you to make a charisma roll, please? 10, 11, 12. Well, it's not a perfect success, but a success is what you need. Because while he seems anxious about the fact that Kevin has just disappeared, he is also listening to you and clearly too polite or maybe even intimidated by you and your status to tell you to fuck off. I do have status. Margot, while this is going on, that gives you the opportunity to look around the room a little. Not in a deep and investigative way, you're not here to play the forensic role. But you look around, you can see there is a... In the study, there's a pair of French doors that lead out to the backyard. One side is largely unopenable. There's a stack of cardboard boxes and other such debris atop it. But on the other side, where the door is openable, there is a coat rack. On that coat rack, or more of a stand, really, you can see a hat. Not unusual. You can also see a long black coat. It's familiar to you. It's like a rainproof Mac, but old style. It's not the kind of thing you see sold, certainly not fashionable anymore. 
It's a bit tattered around the edges. It's what you saw the figure wearing in the footage. It's the coat you saw the shape wearing in the alley between Eli's house and another. Kevin, you have the photo album in hand. Are you going to open it? Yeah, I need to see what's inside. What makes this a fundament? It's just a fucking photo album. You wish you hadn't, as soon as you open it. The contents don't require description, but they certainly portray an awful lot of crimes that Eli Jenkins and quite possibly Nikolai Godzinski were guilty of at the school. You drop the photo album, you can't help not dropping it. It's nauseating, vomit-inducing. The smell is gone. It's concentrated entirely in this album. And now that you have it, and you lean down to pick it up again, Kevin, you know that this is a keystone of your community. What took place in this photo album has formed so much of what Novaville is. Down in the study, Eli looks up as he hears a thump on the ceiling above and then frowns as he looks at both Doug and Margot. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the scenario Tapestry of Suburbia from the scenario collection The Forbidden for Cult Divinity Lost. Cult Divinity Lost is published by Helmgast, who have also sponsored this series. Joining us as players in this series are none other than Bridget Jeffries from Symphony Entertainment and our dear friend Matthew Dawkins. The music was made by Atrium Carceri, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists and was used with permission from their label Cryo Chamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient for your gaming table. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anton, and Graham Berry for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Infinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that community is everything.